Then in step three, you are going to split your data. This is the step in which I'm going to introduce a really important concept. We are going to give a name to the scariest nightmare in machine learning. And I am going to, hopefully, if I do my job right, have you want to split data at a sort of visceral, emotional level. The idea that someone might not split data would disgust you. That's what I'm going for. So let's see if I manage it. Here we have a deterministic application. We have a feature here on the x-axis, 0 to 100. And our job is to use the feature to predict the ground truth, 0 to 200 over there. Can we do it? Can we find a recipe that takes us from the feature to the ground truth? It is so difficult, it is so hidden, that recipe is so hidden, it's in fact hidden over there. All we gotta do is take the feature, double it, and add five, and we're good to go. And as long as we do that, there'll be no mistakes. That is way too easy, come come now. Why don't we put in some noise? Noise that you will not be able to ever predict with any information available to you. Boom, random. 200 data points that are based on our line plus some random noise. There we go. Now that we have noise, does that mean that we are stuck, that we should just guess entirely at random, haphazardly? Or can we actually do better than guessing at random? I think we can do better. Let's use machine learning to do better. Let's predict our ground truth, our label, our target. And let's use this objective function, this performance metric, which is called RMSC, or root mean squared error. That one is probably named by statisticians because it is named for the recipe that you use to calculate it backwards. First, you compute each error. Then you square each error. Then you take the average of all those squared errors. And then you take the square root. Boom, that's the score for the whole thing. Nice. Or another way of thinking of RMSE is simply that. Stupid model, be less incorrect. That's what we're going for. So we do better when RMSE goes up or down. Better is less of it, less error. And what's the best possible RMSE? Zero, no errors at all. Fantastic. So we are going for be less incorrect. And let's look at half of our data. So I've split it into two pieces. I've taken the 200, I've, turned, I've taken only the first 100, and we're now gonna learn from this. We're gonna make some recipes. So the first recipe we're gonna try is to use the model that we saw before, the true one. We're cheating a little bit. We know what the right answer is. Let's see how the right answer model does here. And it gives us an RMSE of 22.24, because there's errors. It's not perfect, there's a noise. Okay. But maybe we hadn't seen all the behind the scenes set up here and we didn't know what the conditions of this universe were. Maybe we were just a data scientist with this information arriving to us, that's all we got. And we're told that our job is to fit a great model that makes as few mistakes as possible. And so we start to do a thing, and you'll totally recognize this thing. You've, you've done it yourselves in science, you've seen your science colleagues do it, it's amazing. So here we go. So you start looking at this plot, yeah, analytics. And then you see it. And when you see it, you can't unsee it. There is a wiggle here. Yeah, do you see the wiggle? It's totally a wiggle, come on. The data have a wiggle. This is absolutely a system. And you know what, the science says that wiggles make sense here. So let's attempt a wiggle model, okay, there we go. Now, do you expect that the performance is better, lower, RMSC is lower when it's better, than before, or do you expect that things are worse so this number has increased? Better or worse, what do you think? Better, better, by definition better because we are closer to our data points now, and the errors are the distance of the points to the, the thing, and that distance has been shortened by us contorting a thing through it, so of course better. You know what, while we're on this reasoning track, why not just take things to their logical conclusion? What's the RMSE here? Zero. Zero. The very best is best, I take my bow. You look disgusted. <laughs> but 
maybe you don't yet have the vocabulary to express what it is about this that offends you so much. So let me see if I can fix that. Remember, we have one job, to do well on stuff we haven't seen yet, not to memorize our old stuff. To memorize our old stuff, that was a perfect solution. But we want a system that can do well on new things, so can this one actually do well on new things? Well, why don't we find out by looking at how it does on new things? So here's the other 100 instances. Let's see the performance. First, the model that entirely consists of signal and no noise, the true model, if you will. Above, in blue, will be the previous data's performance for that model, and this new 100 instances uh, on the same model, below in red. About 22 for both of them. Pretty similar, and that's what we should expect. Now, when we look at wiggle, so remember this is 22 as far as you're concerned. Let's see what happens with the numbers. Higher is worse, lower is better. This one, what do you think will happen? You saw it already. Down, better. How about that one? That's reading more like 23 now. More badness. Uh-oh. That looks like an uh-oh. Again, let's go to our logical conclusion and see if it feels like an uh-oh. Zero versus uh-oh. This situation is called overfitting. And for the last time in your lives, you get a free pass not to feel emotion when you hear this word. From now on, and I will quiz you after lunch, when you see or hear this word, you will feel horror, terror. This is your worst nightmare. This is the profanity in machine learning. Overfitting is what you spit at your enemies. You have one job. Make it work on new stuff. And instead, when you have overfitting, what happens is, there you are, memorizing your old stuff, learning all about the noise and irrelevant stuff in your old data. And when you release your system to go operate on new data, it crashes and burns horribly. And you ask yourself, why did I even get out of bed this morning? It would have been better if I hadn't data scienced. That is overfitting. And we're going to try really hard to avoid it. So overfitting is our worst nightmare in machine learning. It happens when our model is just the noise, the peculiarities of the old stuff, and has nothing to do with the general reality of the new situations. And you need to realize that any fool can get excellent results in the data where they build their models. As proof of that, I need only remind you that even toddlers can play that game where you connect all the dots. The real test is, does it work outside of where you got to cherry pick and torture those solutions? And actually, you should apply this thinking to every endeavor, not just machine learning. When you look at academic results, what scientists publish, it's very easy to make a compelling story pop up out of the data set you use to make that story. Ask, does the story still hold up if you go and collect a bunch of new data and then test the story? In the old data, it's just an opinion. If you want to see if the opinion holds any water, go to new data, test it properly. You can contort some beast of a, an understanding both as a human and as an algorithm in whatever data set you use to do that process might have nothing to do with reality though. Just because it involved data and math doesn't mean it creates truth. Even toddlers can play that dot-to-dot -dot connecting game, right? You can always connect your dots. And you can even connect your dots without realizing it by using a system that's complex, like neural networks. So you have one job, one job one job. Optimizing for fit on fresh data. And if you don't do that, you may as well not have a machine learning system. And for that reason, you need fresh data for checking performance. That is why you split your data. 
There's two ways to, to do this, right? There's the way of saying, I promise to collect more data later, and that might just be a pain, or you have one big data set now, so in advance, just split that thing so that you have some test data for later. That's like you're a professor. You have a bunch of calculus problems. You can either show them all to your students up front, but then you have to go invent 50 others for the final exam, or just save some. Then use those for the final exam. Split your data.